Welcome, dear Portu gang, to the Bime. This is the state of Portuguese roads. Let's check them out. He's good, he's good, he's good, he's good. Wicked. It's Portuguese good. All right, before we get started, I noticed that many of you who enjoy my content still haven't gotten around to subscribing. Of course, you're nothing to subscribe, but it really, really helps me out. So go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Go on, smash it. And remember, if you don't... That's ignorant. All right, let's check it out. Well, look at this. Absolutely miserable day again. Raining, raining, and raining. But the good news is, uh, according to the weather report, from tomorrow, it's gonna be sunshine for at least the next week. So maybe we've finally broken the back of this bad weather and we can make a start of those 300 days of sunshine that uh, Portugal is famous for. What's that you say? It's impossible to have 300 days of sunshine before the end of the year? Don't be so cynical. Anyway, what I want to talk about today is, um, for those of you who are, who are British, you're going to find this quite amazing. Quite amazing when I say that, in my opinion, the roads here are even worse kept than they are in Britain. Um, so yeah, lots and lots of potholes, especially when it's rainy like this. In fact, I mentioned in a previous video how um, the road between my village and uh, the next village actually disappeared in the rain a couple of years ago. Uh, not enough drainage and a big chunk of the road completely subsided. So we were cut off from the other village for, it seemed like forever, it was probably about six months in the end. But anyway, lots and lots of potholes, lots and lots of rough patching, lots of uh, pretty cobblestone, but um, it has a very special problem. So, I don't know if you noticed that, we just went over a bump there. That was obviously where someone's um, dug a trench through to put a pipe or some wiring through. They just patch it up not very well. Then the other thing that happens is we have these um, speed humps, and I'll show you them. Um, I'm not really a fan of speed humps <laughs> generally. Um, I kind of think you should be able to travel on the road at the speed limit. Um, and what's quite amazing is Portuguese people just fly over these things, but um, it could also be because blue is a little bit, um, it was the SRI model of this car, so it's a little bit lowered and has a little bit harder suspension, but I can't, I just can't blast over these speed humps at all. Or I'll probably bottom out, but these speed humps make sense because we're actually going past a kindergarten, but I'll show you, they're very, very steep. And what happens is the road is made from tarmac and the speed humps are made from um, the cobblestones or the calçada as they're called. And what happens at the junction between the calçada and the um, tarmac, potholes form, especially when it's raining heavily like it has been um, for the last hundred years, no, I'm just exaggerating, for the last uh, four or five months, it seems like. But anyway, potholes uh, form wherever they've dug these channels. So I'm just gonna point the camera forward and I'll just show you. So you can see here, this long groove is obviously where they've laid some cables or some pipes or something. I don't know if the camera showed that up. But you can see how the quality, and there was another one, I've just gone over another one, which was going across the road. And the quality of um, where they fill in these holes, see here again, um, is really poor. So even though the tarmac itself is usually okay, you know, no, no, um, no better or worse than back in good old blighty, it's where they patch it that, that, that is the weak link. So very often you end up with massive uh, potholes. So I would say. Um, probably two or three times a year, I, I hit something with a real bang, you know? Really, really bangs quite often enough that I have to go and um, put air in one of the tires because I'll have popped a load of air out of the tires. So then every now and again afterwards, I can feel my, steer, my uh, wheel alignment has gone out. It's bloody annoying, but there's not really much you can could, you could do about it. Um, but what I have done, because I live in rural Portugal, is I've asked around and I found a guy um, who does wheel alignment, just, you can just drive your car straight in, and he does it, um, he does it cheaply. <laughs> he does it on the cheap. He does it on the cheap, gang. And you know, 
you know what I'm like about these things. I like things, uh, I like it when they're done properly, but I like it when they're done cheaply. So we're gonna go up there now, I'm gonna get the wheel alignment done, and um, I'm gonna show you how it works. So I'm gonna walk in, ask him if he can do the wheel alignment. Hopefully he's able to do it right away. If he is, I'll show you how long it takes, and then I want you guys to guess how much he's gonna charge me to do this uh, wheel alignment. All right, so we are nearly there, or nearly there. So just um, in, interested to really ask my Portuguese subscribers what they think about this. So for example, I've lived in um, Nazaré, which is obviously a bigger a bigger city than uh, near where I live. And I also was in the Algarve for a little while. And here where I live out in the village, I'm also near a big town called Oliveira de Hospital, okay? And there's definitely a difference between the town and the village. So for example, um, in my town, you have the usual sort of chain mechanics. And so what I mean by that is in the UK, um, you know, you have um, a village mechanic, you, you sort of a private guy, um, owner operated sort of outfit. And then you have your, those sort of chain, the, the chain uh, stores that are sort of national, nation, nationwide. And uh, you have a few of those here. So for example, there's a big one here called uh, Rody. Um, who, to be fair, I've used a couple of times and had reasonably good experiences with them. Um, but in my town, there's another one. I, I don't want to name them, um, but I feel like they overcharged me a couple of times. But anyway, as time's gone on, I've met, for example, our village mechanic. He can't do everything. He, he hasn't got all the equipment to do everything, but most jobs like um, changing your brakes or I don't know, fixing your exhaust or th things like that. He's completely capable of doing and he does do them. And and the price difference is unimaginable. I mean, it's like um, 20s and 30s, 40 sort of euro prices compared to hundreds of euro prices at the big guys in town. And um, again, he can't do everything, but then he, he um, got me onto a guy again just out of the town who does really good prices on tires so for example I, i've got a guy who i go and buy tires from um and then normally the um you know the big boys who, who sell tires normally they can do things like wheel alignment and all that kind of thing but uh he can't do that all he does is sell tires but then he put me onto this other guy who does the wheel alignment so this takes time and i really do believe here there's kind of a different economy um a different economy um, people who live in the town and people who live in in the villages you know um, because obviously those big chain outfits in the town are used by Portuguese people as well it's not like it's just you know dumb ignorant uh, foreigners who are going in and using them they're being used by Portuguese people as well so I just wonder what my um, Portuguese um, you know or anyone else has got experience with this um, subscribers if, if you would comment on that, do you agree that there's a kind of a different economy in the villages? So, you know, it's even things like um, when we buy firewood in the village, I'll buy it by um, the cubic the cubic ton. I think I get two cubic tons for, I can't remember exactly, 50 euro, 60 euro. It depends what mix of wood I buy. But if I bought that from, say, Lidl, <laughs> in bags from in bags from little it would be it would be hundreds and hundreds of of, of euros to go and buy it from um, you know the supermarkets uh, compared to buying it sort of locally in the village so there is that kind of uh, village market you know so yeah just uh, let me know in the comments um, my Portuguese subscribers and also um, any other sort of you know foreign foreigners who've had similar experience or maybe you haven't had that experience and maybe this is the first time you're hearing about it and it's something to uh something for you guys to check out anyway we're nearly there i'll see you in a bit all right so we're just uh coming up to the place now Ooh. looks like there's uh nobody in front of me so I normally do it, I just pull up here and you guys wait here and I'll go find someone. See if they can uh, see if they can help me now.
right, so he can do it now. He was asking me if there's anything special about the car. He can't do like laser treatment or anything like that. So, yeah, okay. But he's gonna uh, crack on and get that done now. Right, so this is the thing. I want you guys to place your bets. Uh, put it in the chat and tell me how much you think this is gonna cost, okay? I'll see you guys in a bit when it's done. All right, so there we go. Very painless, straight in. He had the job done in about, ooh, about 10 minutes, I think it took him, 10 minutes. So what were your guesses, guys? I mean, to be fair, it did only take him 10 minutes, but yeah, the wheel was really out of alignment and uh, you could definitely feel a lot less feedback coming through the wheel and um, definitely feel like uh, the car, the wheel isn't, it was, it did feel a little bit like it was pulling towards the, uh, the right. So yeah, anyway, 10 euros. 10 euros. Now, the funny thing is, I think last time I went there, he charged me 5 euros. But anyway, 10 euros to have it done. So I'm pretty happy with that. What do you guys think? Does that seem like a fair price to have the uh, have the wheel alignment done? Yeah. So anyway, just a quick word to anyone um, who's not really familiar with why you have to have the wheel alignment done. So, um, when you do a lot of driving somewhere where you you are hitting potholes or maybe um, <laughs> maybe the kind of person who hits curves and things like that, if you do notice that your steering wheel is you're getting a little bit of feedback, a little bit more vibration, and you may be um, pulling one way or the other, or maybe your car's pulling a bit when you when you brake, it could be more serious things. Um, don't get me wrong, especially if you're getting like really a lot of shaking. So especially if you're really getting a lot of shaking and a lot of feedback and, you, and your car's really pulling one way or the other, especially on, on the brakes, it could be something more serious. So you do need a, a mechanic to check that out. But it could be something as simple as um, the wheel alignment. So you do want to have a mechanic who's trustworthy to look at that. And um, why else you really need to get it done is because if your wheel alignment is out, you'll... Um, you'll wear your tires out really quickly. You can wear a good set of tires out in a couple of months easily if your um, wheel alignment's out. So apart from the safety aspect, and there is a safety aspect because um, your car will pull one way or the other under brakes. So imagine under heavy braking, your car might actually go out of control. Um, but there's also the uh, wear and tear on the tires. So that's something to think about. Anyway, I think I'm going to wrap the video up here. I'm going to go into town now, do a few more errands, um, and then I'll get home and walk the dogs. But yeah, if you like this type of content and you're new around here, please consider subscribing. It really, really helps me out. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Muito obrigado, amigos. Ciao.